everybody. Welcome to another tech tip with me, Micah Hoffman from the OSINT Curious Project. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how to use the robots.txt file for open source intelligence. Now, when we have websites on the internet that we understand that Google, Bing, Yandex, DuckDuckGo, they scan the sites and they pull back the content. What you don't know or might not know is that I, as a web owner, website owner, I can tell Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, Yandex what not to index on my sites. Yeah, it's a simple file that's a text file and it's at the root level of most domains out there. Let's take a look. This is the Amazon.com website. We just add robots.txt to the end and we get this text file. Now the way we read this is the user agent here. It says any user agent, that star or glob character says any user agent string, I want you to uh, abide by this. And we're going to disallow any Google search uh, engine, any other bot from going into these directories here, slash GP. So it would be like amazon.com slash GP slash AWS slash SSOP. Um, so don't go into those, but you can go into these, but don't go into these. And you get it. I mean, this keeps certain stuff that Amazon doesn't want being indexed and searchable by the search engines off the search engines. What this also does is reveals that the search engines that we use may not have all of the data that you can get from a website if you just visit the website. If you visited the website, there's nothing that would stop you from visiting registry wishlist. And yet Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo are not going to have anything from registry wishlist actually in their site because they are abiding by this robots.txt file. Now, it's not just commercial places that have these. Governments have them too. Here's one from the gov.uk site. This actually has some interesting comments in the file that explain why they're blocking certain sites. So the deepcrawl.com bot makes a lot of requests. Ideally, we'd slow it down, but we can't do that. So um, it, we're just going to go ahead and block that certain crawler, that certain uh, search engine from getting information. This is an inter interesting thing because some we always talk about using multiple sources of information, like use Bing and Google or DuckDuckGo and Yandex for our searches because we get different perspectives. One of the ways we get different perspectives is because sites out there are telling Google, don't go in here or Bing, don't go in here, but they're not saying that to the other search engines. So if you did use the deep crawl bot or whatever the, the results are, wherever the results for deep crawl bot goes, if you were using that on gov.uk, you would not be able to get as much information as you would uh, from another site like Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo. Now here's another one. I'm going to zoom in here just because there's some bad words down there on the page. Here's another reason why people use robots.txt file. Now on AuthorStream, people can post not what they want, but within reason, they can publish their own articles. That's part of the site. But AuthorStream doesn't want its site, its domain to be known for certain types of things. So they disallow anything that any search engine to index anything with the word Viagra in the end or male enhancement or penis or supplements. So if I create a blog post saying the benefits of vitamin C supplements, and that's what I call it, Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, Yandex are not going to index it because they've been disallowed due to this blacklist of, of terms. Something for me to know. Now, sometimes the information in the robots.txt files can be uh, helpful because it can reveal future things that are coming down the pike or coming in the future. For instance, here's one on codeacademy.com and in here it says search engines don't go into the beta catalog. I don't want you indexing it. Well, as an OCenter, what is a place that I want to go? Heck yeah, beta catalog. Let's go ahead in there. And what do we get? We find upcoming courses. Now these should not be indexed in DuckDuckGo, Google, Bing, Yandex, Weibo, um, Weibo <laughs> Baidu, or any of those other search engines. But here we have beta content and we could continue down this path. So 
Um, just keep in mind that sometimes the robots.txt contains old content. Sometimes it contains future content that they don't want indexed. Now, of course, search engines can have these robots.txt files too that allow other search engines and spiders to understand how Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo wants to be indexed. And you can see the places that are allowed and the places that are not allowed. Interesting, right? Let's see another one that's a little curious to me. I'm not sure why, but uh, I'm not sure why it's 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 in here. But the CodeMentor.io site in the robots.txt file has a couple of entries in there that are interesting. For instance, um, the Roman Kazak directory is uh, something that's disallowed. So if you're Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, you're not allowed to index stuff in there, but you are in other directories. So I wonder why that is. If we go to site colon codementor.io and we look up any of the other code mentors like Ricardo Murillo, we get content back. In fact, if I mouse over this or click on it even, we get his actual profile. If we do the exact same thing for uh, Roman Kazak, the, the results coming back are per conversations he's participated in or posts he's posted, but I don't see his profile in here. That's because, well, we've, they've said don't index it. Now that doesn't mean that it's not in Google. It just means that the content is not retrievable from Google. Cause if we change this, uh, Google dork instead to say in URL code mentor IO slash Roman Kazak, which is the, the actual URL to his profile. We do see that there's a page that exists, but there's no Google cache or content from that page because of the robots.txt file. Interesting, huh? So maybe at some point Roman Kazak had some inflammatory stuff or something that code mentor didn't want to be uh, in the search engines and they blocked him. Lastly, one of the other things to hammer home the point on use different search engines when you're using when you're doing your OSINT is that we can have different search engines being blocked in different places or uh, blocked from going different places here. All of the user agents are blocked. All of the, the bots are blocked from visiting these channels. But if we scroll down, we see that Google is specifically blocked by these. Now, many of these overlap, but there could be an extra one in here or one that's missing because maybe we want Google to index to have the to be the only search engine that looks at this content. As we scroll down, we see Yandex is ca called out. We see Yandex videos called out, MSN bot and so on. Now, just keep in mind that site owners can choose what bots get into what places of the site. And that trickles down to what sites have the content that you're going to need. So always use multiple sites and check the robots.txt file for interesting places to visit on the sites that you're targeting. I hope you've enjoyed this 10 minute tip video. I'm Michael Hoffman. Ask you to stay open curious.